In my last video, I asked you guys if you wanted a plant video, plant collection, plant 101. That was a big yes from you guys. Uh, message was loud and clear. I'm here to deliver. We are making that video today. Disclaimer, I'm not a plant expert, so this is all based on personal experience. We are all here to support each other through this very exciting time, which is having way too many goddamn plants to the point where I'm so stressed that after quarantine, I'm gonna have to leave somewhere for work and they're not gonna have the TLC that I'm giving them right now and Phineas is probably not gonna water them even if I text him because there's just so many goddamn plants in this house. We'll deal with that when we get there. First things first, where do I get my plants? Your first and probably best option would be any local nurseries in your area. They definitely feel like one of the safer things to go out and get with a mask on because a lot of nurseries are outside because they're selling indoor and outdoor plants. That would be my number one recommendation, but the other option is to buy plants online. This is something that I did not know was a thing until like six months ago or something. Buy Buying plants online, I'm a fan. I'm into it. There's always gonna be risk with buying plants online because you don't really know who is delivering the plant. My two favorite places are The Sill and Bloomscape. I just found them through Google and they had really great reviews. The Sill is kind of like the bougier version, I would say. The pots are really, really pretty. A lot of like shiny clay pots, different shapes. You can choose what sizes, what type of pot you want, the color of that kind. But overall, I've had a really great experiences with The Sill. Everything has come in in pretty much perfect condition. They pack up their plants really well. They give you all the information that you need on how to take care of your plants. Bloomscape is awesome because they have a lot of larger plants that can ship to different areas. So for example, the plant behind me, this was from Bloomscape. You can choose the color of their pots. I love the terracotta color. I get a lot of those and black and the gray color. So you have options. You can do it in person. You can do it online. What you need. Not very many things. You obviously need a watering can. This is my indoor watering can. I had a prettier silver one. I still do. It's, I think, in a different room right now. Just a simple plastic one that has a nice little handle on the top and the side. I will obviously link everything that I'm talking about in today's video. You want to get a mister for your plants, obviously, to mist the leaves. I recently heard about this mister from Megan Rinks. Purchased it immediately because I like the way that this mister sprays. It's just like a lot longer. The last thing that you need is some plant fertilizer. I'm starting to realize that a lot of plants just really need fertilizing, especially during different parts of the year. The first one that I ever tried was the miracle Grow indoor plant food. This stuff fucking works. It is insane. Maybe like not the best thing to use if you are trying to fertilize like a tomato plant or something that you're gonna eat because I don't think that this is organic. It's a very great kind of like beginner fertilizer. These are two other options that I'm playing around. This one is Joyful Dirt. This one comes in a powder form, so you sprinkle it on top of the dirt and then you water, and the water helps to bring the fertilizer down into the soil. And then also recently I purchased an indoor plant fertilizer. I'm still new to this one, but they all kind of do the same thing. The last thing that I wanted to mention before we get into the plant collection is probably one of the most game-changing things that I have ever ever incorporated into my gardening. Maddie Bragg actually recommended me this app on your homepage. It tells you exactly what you need to do today and tomorrow and the next day. Today, I have quite a few things to do because like I said, huge plant mom over here. The wonderful thing is you can check them off or if you feel that your soil is still wet, then you can press the Z's and choose either to skip it until next time or remind me in two days, which is awesome. When you go to my plants, you'll see all of my different sites. This makes it really easy to figure out how much light is in each room and what plant is recommended in that room because basically when you create a new site, you use their lightometer feature, which is using your camera in conjunction with the compass on your phone and it can determine what direction your window is facing and how much light is coming in from the room. Also, obviously not sponsored. I wish I was sponsored by this app, but I fully am a paying customer. Let's get into all of the plants in my life. Life. 
We're gonna start off with all of the plants in my office. This is definitely the first room that I started messing around with. The first one is this little Monstera, which is definitely busting out of its pot. I just make sure to rotate this plant every so often so that it gets sun on every side. I have personally found these to be very easy to take care of. I have a larger one downstairs. This plant up here is a heart leaf philodendron. I'm sure I'll be pronouncing some of these wrong, but it is a vine plant. As you can see, the leaves are heart shaped. They're super pretty. And this has grown a ton. When I first got it, it was like about this long. So there's been a lot of growth. In general, I find vine plants to be pretty easy to take care of. You just sort of water them when the soil is dry and just forget about them. This big guy is a birds of paradise plant. It's one of my favorites. I think the leaves are gorgeous. This plant has definitely gone through some hardships. If you guys remember, it arrived upside down. I eventually just clipped them all off. But, I mean, so many new leaves have grown in. This is entirely new. It's currently unwrapping right now. I have a few of these plant stands and I love them. I think they just look so great and it sort of lifts the plant off of the ground, making it a little bit taller. I will give you guys a bunch of links on different stands that either I've purchased or I just find through searching. I also love this little black stand as well. It's a bit taller and looks great with this emerald gem plant. This plant has has been pretty low maintenance. I've moved around a few times and it's definitely favored this one the most. On this clothing rack, I have some plants up there, but since they are incredibly backlit, I'm gonna put these on the table real quick. This aloe vera plant has gotta be one of my favorites. It is so easy to take care of. You barely have to water it and it just loves the sun. If you put this thing next to a window, you're just gonna find yourself constantly rotating it because it grows towards the sun so quickly. I think it looks so cool. Here we have a a Mexican snowball, just your classic looking succulent. Very cute, very easy to take care of as well. Just have it on a windowsill. I also got this one at the same time. It is a sweetheart plant because it has like a little heart and I think this one needs some misting while this one doesn't. This one is a bird's nest snake plant. It is so cute and I've just always had it on this table. It's receiving equal amounts of light in the middle of the room. Watering it is incredibly easy. I literally just pour it right here in the middle and it all just sinks down in there. I keep saying everything is easy, but just, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, but this one's super cute. And yeah, the last plant we have in here is this parlor palm. Very, very cute and tropical looking. I've had no issues with this plant. It stayed here the whole time. Um, and I think it's really cute. We're gonna move on to the bedroom now. I only have three plants in here. I recently had to move one downstairs. So there's not much action going on up here because this room gets pretty shady. For now, we have a ZZ plant on each nightstand. These plants are great for shadier rooms. They don't need too much sun, but they can also handle sun. They're growing kind of slow, but I don't mind it because they're in these smaller pots. So we just have one on each side. Here is the other one. So yeah, they're definitely staying small, but they're they're kind of cramped in their own shady corners. On our nightstand, we have a Marble Queen Pothos. These leaves are so, so beautiful. This has been a very slow growing plant. It seems to be doing well in this area. Nothing is dying over here. Stepping into the dining room, we've got a few plants in here, some really great windows going on. So this is sort of the perfect room for that. This plant is called a mother-in-law's tongue. <laughs> It's basically a type of snake plant. We originally had this in the bedroom and realized that it just wasn't getting enough sun. So a lot of the leaves started dying out on the tips right here. I just have to trim that, but it is doing way better in this sunny spot. So we have moved it from the bedroom. This plant's pretty gorgeous, doesn't need a lot of watering. But yeah, how cute is that? It like perfectly fits in this little corner. As mentioned before, we have a large Monstera. Sorry, the lighting is a little bit difficult. This plant used to be in our guest room and I brought it down here because we just had a really large corner. This plant likes a lot of room because it clearly grows outwards. I just recently turned this plant because all of these leaves were facing towards the windows and I'm hoping that they kind of grow this way by having it turned a little bit. But this 
plant is gorgeous. Are you kidding me? Look at that. Oh my goodness. Here's another Monstera. This one I just got in the mail like a week ago, two weeks ago or something like that. It came with some damaged leaves. I don't really know why this happened. These were uncurled. They just started to uncurl right now. But you know, when you buy plants online, it's a risk. You never know the condition that they're gonna come in. And I know that this plant is just gonna thrive. For the most part, it's a very healthy plant. There's definitely no issues with it, but it'll definitely grow out. Then in this corner, we have a fiddle fig leaf tree. I actually can't believe that I bought this plant online. I got it from Bloomscape and it is so happy in this house. We had it in our breakfast room for a while but then recently put something else in that corner it has just grown super tall and it seems to be really pleased I think it started burning up a little bit right here tell me what this means right here you guys but I think it got a little too hot from the window so I turned it and I also pushed it away from the window I'm still figuring out if the fiddle fig leaf likes this area but they are definitely more difficult to take care of they're just really specific about light getting watered and you have to dust off the leaves and you have to mix missed it so definitely not like a beginner plant but I have found that like a lot of people start with this plant including myself and I feel like I'm getting the hang of this guy I've got a little plant going on right here some pothos vine moving into the living room we have another fiddle fig leaf plant this one for some reason has been so incredibly easy yeah I've just had no issues with this one it's so strange how sometimes it's difficult and sometimes you just kill it with location and everything but this plant has has literally never shown any sign of distress or needing more water or needing more sun. It really loves this window right here. This is generally like a darker room, but it's really been happy in this spot and it's really grown so much. It started off really small. This is gorgeous. I love this plant so much. And I think this was the first one we had in this house. We've got this very adorable plant assortment. For the most part, it is just aloe, which is what we have upstairs. And I feared that this would be too shady of a spot, but it seems to be doing fine in this corner so we just leave that right there on our fireplace on the left side we have another heart leaf philodendron I keep feeling like I'm pronouncing that wrong this one I believe I got from the sill but this pot is very cute on the other side we have this pothos plant I've had this one for a very long time I just bought it from a local nursery doesn't mind this quite shady spot vines look so gorgeous when they're like growing down and this one has just really taken off. On our vinyl stand, we've got uh, a chunk of that plant in this little vase, very cute. In our breakfast room, we have this tiny little baby fiddle fig leaf on the table. It is so freaking cute. I think it's so much easier to have a potted plant in the center of your table versus a bouquet of flowers because flowers last at most a week and it's really easy to just maintain and always have a potted plant. I don't know when this snapped off, but it did. I'm just gonna put that there. This pot is just an assortment of cacti and jelly bean plant. So I am treating it as a jelly bean plant in terms of watering schedule. We've had this for a very long time. I'm very shocked that it hasn't died on us, but we just keep it on a windowsill. Looks very gorgeous. Yeah, pretty cute. We are now moving outside. This plant is an olive tree I guess an olive branch so here's the story with this one we got it it was beautiful it was luscious I put it out here it died because I just forgot to water it I don't know I'm not even kidding it was fully bare with just yellow and brown leaves on it but since getting the planta app I was like you know what I think I can revive this plant bring it back to life and it has grown so fast and so much in like two weeks look at all of these little leaves Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so filled out in just a few weeks. Yeah, we keep this plant in full sun. Obviously it's in the shade right now, but this is a very sunny spot. This gorgeous plant is a lion's tail. This plant can definitely be in full sun, but I noticed that the tips of these leaves kind of like shriveled up and burnt once we brought it out here. I don't know if maybe it was used to a little bit more shade. I think it's fine. I think we'll be fine. I've had this plant for a while. It's called a 
wave jade. They're like wavy and it looks like coral that belongs underwater. I'm gonna be honest, I think I've watered this thing like twice in my life. I don't know why, it just really doesn't need any water and somehow it has never died on me. This is a giant birds of paradise plant. It is so beautiful. I originally had it in like a sunnier spot over there and uh, it didn't like it very much, but it loves this spot. In the corner here, I have a very large, I believe golden pothos just hanging over here and it's pretty much always in the shade. So it's loving this spot. I make sure to water it and mist it often. Yeah, it just got so big that I decided to have it outside. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it didn't bore you out of your mind. I'm really banking on your sweet comments asking for this because this is just such a passionate topic for me. I love plants. It's such a great way to bring life into your space. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to thumbs up. I will have links to all of the different things that I showed you guys in the description. I love you guys. I'll see you very soon.